My name is Warren Maybe. I am the director of the School of Policy Studies, uh, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to another edition of our Contagion Cultures uh, series of talks. Um, today we have uh, Dr. Uh, Ugarin Burkock uh, joining us, and uh, we'll say a, a couple more words about that in a moment. Before we get underway, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that uh, I am currently sitting on the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. Because we're all connecting uh, online, some of you may be on other traditional territories and other parts of the country, uh, but we always like to take a moment just to acknowledge this and, and to give thanks for the fact that we're able to uh, work, study, and play on these lands. It's uh, uh, important for us to keep in mind the people who uh, were here when uh, the settlers arrived and their role in stewarding this landscape. Um, <clears throat> we have been running this series of talks for uh, about a month and a half now. I think that we're about uh, six talks into the series. Uh, I would encourage you, if you haven't been taking part in the series up until now, to take a look on the School of Policy Studies website. Uh, and you can find an archive of the uh, lectures, uh, the series that we've done up until now. The other thing I'll say just before we get underway is that this is set up as a webinar uh, and there's really one good way to ask us questions and that's through the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. So as we're going through this talk, if you have a question, uh, take a moment, uh, move your mouse around, you'll see Q&A down at the bottom. Uh, of your screen, click on that, and there will be a window where you can enter questions as we go. Uh, and that uh, would be uh, the best way to get these, these questions across. Um, <clears throat> so let me uh, take a moment to introduce our speaker for today. So uh, Uger is uh, uh, a long-term associate with the School of Policy Studies and a professor in uh, the School of Economics or Department of Economics at RMC. Yep. Uh, and, uh, you know, you've worked in a variety of different places, Uger, and you've had a variety of different experiences. I'm sure you can get into that a little bit. Uh, but uh, what I do want to say is that um, he's had uh, a big role in helping us within the school as we've kind of reformed our economics programs and, and looked at the way that we teach and the way that we use uh, economics within our program. So I want to thank you for that. Um, I don't want to steal any more of your time. So uh, Uber, I'm going to hand over to you. And if you want to start sharing your screen, we can get your uh, presentation underway. All right. Um, I changed the title a little bit uh, to reflect better the material uh, we're going to discuss. Um, so just about everybody, I'm sure, um, started thinking about doing new things in the new context, uh, uh, this new epidemic, pandemic. Um, so um, the little story here, I was discussing with Ben, uh, that's our uh, Binyam Solomon that you see the name there. Um, <clears throat> And um, if there is any economist, um, you will understand our pain. We sort of, we started building too complicated a model. Uh, and then came this physicist turned economist, uh, Greg. Uh, he suggests a very simple model. You're not gonna see this model today. I, I tried to minimize so that we can all converse on uh, what's the, uh, the, the topic. So anyway, uh, in the past few days, uh, here are the things. So let me just uh, move on. First of all, um, I got uh, connected uh, through Jennifer. But uh, if I understand correctly, Jennifer and Warren have um, prepared and uh, they are running uh, the series. So uh, thanks to both. So um, <clears throat> the um, it was, I think, back in April or May, uh, many of you will remember that um, President Trump leaned over to Dr. Burks and uh, mentioned Lysol and UV uh, rays. 
So I spoke to my colleague at RMC, if anybody wants to know him, whether he completed building this uh, gadget, but uh, uh, he's uh, unseriously building this machine to sort of uh, emit UV rays from inside your body because it won't work from outside. So here's a piece of culture that developed. We're joking so much about some of the things um, we're hearing uh, from south of the border. More seriously, <clears throat> Well, this came to me uh, the other day. Uh, it relates to what we're trying to do uh, in this paper. Um, well, everybody knows uh, what happened to Alexei Navalny. Um, now, the, the, it's, it's a, the, the, the German doctors uh, identified it as a nerve agent, the, the poison. So it's a chemical substance, not biological. Uh, on the other hand, WMDs include, apart from nuclear uh, and biological, chemical and radiological, and the, I think the polonium was the substance with which they tried to, uh, two Russians visiting the Salisbury Cathedral by chance, uh, and uh, somebody um, um, tried to, I'm forgetting the name of Skrupal, I think, I think it was polonium. Uh, certainly the, the, the guy they killed earlier, a few years ago, was polonium. So we are in the territory of WMDs and we concentrated on, uh, I can explain the reasons as uh, we, we, we move. So, well, the, uh, the, 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 the SARS-CoV-2 uh, is a virus uh, in the family of coronaviruses. I'm not a biologist, but I tried to read. I've been reading since April. So knowledge against, and knowledge will explain the knowledge. Uh, knowledge is a deterrent against um, terrorist attacks using uh, biological weapons. Um, a few countries have knowledge stockpiles uh, plus some, perhaps more than that, they have stockpiles of uh, biological weapons. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to get into this deterrence uh, dimension of the biological substances, biological uh, uh, constructs, uh, the basically microbes, which include viruses and uh, bacteria. Uh, some other people include, well, I guess the biologists include um, Prions, I have no idea what, um, collapse the ribbon. Which ribbon am I collapsing? I'll try, uh, I'll continue. Is there any harm, uh, Warren, uh, collapsing the ribbon? Maybe you can try going into the presenter view if you click the, the presenter view at the bottom of your screen. Uh, presenter. The slideshow. The slideshow. Uh, slideshow. You can do it at the bottom or top of your screen. Okay. <clears throat> It'll be easier for people to see uh, what, what you're presenting. Okay, slideshow, let's see here. <clears throat> I don't... Go up to the top of your screen maybe on the ribbon. Uh, all I see is I'll minimize my screen. You should see slideshow, okay. one of the options, and then you can click and present from current slide. I'm clicking on something here. Let's see what happens. Okay. Everything got very fuzzy. I'm not sure what you clicked on. <laughs> um, there is, okay. Uh, we might be viewing the wrong thing. Uh, uh, can you see the uh, the slide? No, so you're gonna have to share that screen. Sorry about this. Uh, okay. you have to click the share screen button and pick the presentation. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and? Yeah, now go to the, uh, the share screen button. 
and you should share screen button. Okay, I've got it. I think that's it, right? Right now I'm seeing your presentation in PowerPoint mode, not in presentation mode. That's it. You're on it right there. Perfect. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> So the, the, we're going to get into this deterrent um, uh, aspect uh, of um, the knowledge. Um, but uh, if, if we see this in a strategic con context, uh, and we're talking about here like um, our colleagues in uh, political science and other social sciences, um, the, if you are using this potential weapon, your knowledge, uh, either as um, um, defensive or offensive ways. In any case, that's that's power. So we are imagine we are sort of uh, picturing here um, in the way we're building uh, the, the the model. Um, <clears throat> the more knowledge you have, and that's uh, in the sense of the scope as well as as well as depth uh, of of your knowledge. Um, the more power you can project, just uh, for the sheer fact that uh, you, you know you have the knowledge, you can use it, and we're going to see soon that uh, can give you, in the defensive sense, uh, vaccines and therapies, uh, prophylactics and therapeutics. So that is uh, pretty much your your power. Um, if if uh, anybody who intends to uh, launch a, a bioattack, well, if you have the vaccines as well as therapeutics, well, that's pointless. So it reduces the incentive to attack. In that sense, um, uh, it, it's it's deterrence. But uh, when you're talking about various countries uh, in the field, uh, if you share your knowledge that reduces your edge in terms of um, your power projection. So you have a trade-off. We identified uh, that as a trade-off. Um, so one other thing to note is, um, well, this knowledge is a public good. If it's out there, uh, even if you may sort of may not be willing to share with the other country, we have sort of in our minds uh, just two countries, but you can easily generalize it. Uh, it's a public good in the sense that when the knowledge is out there, anybody can use the knowledge. So when you share with uh, the other country, uh, it's, uh, you can call it a public good, you can call it a local public good, so on and so forth. So um, we're not going to talk much about the, uh, the, 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 the Biological Weapons Convention, goes back to 72, effective from 75. Uh, we know uh, such international agreements can do, cannot do uh, in uh, the international arena. And one thing we're going to come back to, um, what is uh, a good level, optimal level deterrence, uh, over deterrence, under deterrence. Let me just say this, uh, just as uh, to, to move forward. <clears throat> Uh, everybody will remember the expression uh, Fortress US in, uh, after 9-11. Uh, well, if you shut down your borders to a lot of people, um, um, the, 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 in that case against the, uh, the terrorists, well, they're going to go and hit European countries. So that leads to an over deterrence because uh, one, one country deters the other one in full knowledge of the fact that um, allies will be hit elsewhere, uh, everybody will start deterring more than they, they ought to. So over deterrence in that sense. So, <clears throat> um, uh, I mean, I'm gonna bore many of you interested on the strategic side with some knowledge of uh, microbiology, epidemiology, uh, not that I know uh, too much about it, but I think it is necessary to understand uh, the bioweapons. But one thing is um, bioweapons are not as surgical as the rest. Uh, you might find some resemblance to the radiological, uh, sort of the, the uh, clean, uh, uh, dirty bombs, uh, because it might just, especially the bioweapons, 
uh, it might just go around the whole world. It might even sort of hurt uh, people you care about. So <clears throat> uh, in that sense, it's a public bad. And what you can do against uh, as part of prevention, which includes deterrence, preemption, et cetera, uh, that, that is a public good. So we are defining public good with respect to public bad generated by a potential bio uh, attack. So uh, amongst the things uh, I learned, uh, the words I learned is zoonosis, zoonoses, zoonotic diseases. So um, to me, I never, know, I never knew the, the difference between a virus and a bacterium. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to be more specific about it because uh, um, we're going to come to the history of some of the uh, bio attack, bio, um, <clears throat> where bio weapons have been used. They were all bacterial attacks, uh, whereas vi viral attack has never been used in the history of humankind, whereas there have been numerous uh, bacterial attacks. Um, and I have a vague knowledge of parasites and prions. I think the prions are uh, one type of prion caused the mad cow disease. Um, <clears throat> now, what is uh, interesting in this whole pandemic uh, was presumably uh, it's, there was an intermediary uh, from bats that carry large numbers of viruses uh, to sort of an intermediary animal. I mean, the, 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 in that wet market in Wuhan, uh, pangolin was just one of the, uh, the animals. So we don't know, we'll feel, someday perhaps we'll know uh, which animal was the vector that carried the virus from the animal kingdom to part of the animal kingdom, us. <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, none of these is a bio attack, but um, might as well have been. In fact, um, next page or the slide or two, we're gonna come into a strongly suspected one. So <clears throat> actually the bio attacks, not necessarily nature's bio, that they, they must have been around uh, way longer than a hundred years. Uh, if you look at this list, <clears throat> um, these are all the um, the the, the, um, uh, the epidemics, pandemics that um, we have read in the papers in the literature, um, and they are different viruses. But these are all viruses. So I picked all the viruses and I left aside uh, one of the four components of um, potential pathogens. So. Here we go, uh, the bio attacks. Uh, as I said, again, the, my knowledge is um, um, probably not that deep, that there could have been a viral bio attack in the past 120 years, going back to 2000. But presumably uh, the one, uh, the, the two perhaps we're gonna concentrate are the, the last two. The 1979 Sverdlovsk, that was an accident. Uh, an anthrax bacterium, uh, well, or, um, I don't know how it escaped the, the, the laboratory, the research facility. Uh, but anyway, uh, we learned about it way later, obviously. We're talking about 1979. Um, at first, perhaps, um, this uh, sect in Oregon, they used this to affect. Uh, this is um, very interesting. Uh, not funny to those who were uh, affected, but uh, they wanted to get people sick in that town uh, so that they couldn't vote. There was a local vote and they wanted to change the, um, uh, the outcome. So they, they went around all, the, um, uh, all they could do they, to go to the um, buffets and uh, just um, uh, sprinkled, uh, I don't know how you spread the salmonella bacterium, but uh, that's what they did. Uh, nobody died, lots of people got sick. So the two that are interesting strategically are uh, the, the Kosovo 1999 uh, bio attack, uh, quote unquote, 
which turned out to be not a bio attack. This is the time Kosovo was, um, um, <clears throat> I don't know the exact uh, calendar there, but uh, uh, they were gaining their sort of, I, I think it was uh, the, the Kosovo versus uh, the separation war from uh, Serbia. And they started observing the um, uh, tularemia is another bacterium. Uh, it doesn't kill you uh, as would, for example, Ebola or uh, HIV, so on and so forth. But uh, it, it was making a lot of people very sick. So um, they got suspicious, well, who was behind this attack? Uh, at the end of the day, and this is a very important uh, preventive, um, perhaps part of deterrence, I might say, uh, the, the forensic analytical ability. So at the end of the day, German scientists related to the German army, I think they were deployed there as peacekeepers. Uh, they, they figured out, they concluded rather, that um, the uh, Tularemia, this bacterium was endemic to the region. In fact, there had been uh, several uh, outbreaks. So it was uh, nobody's attack, but it looked like an attack. So here is a, uh, the bioweapon, uh, nature launched. We suspected it was uh, sort of human uh, induced, but turns out it wasn't. Now, perhaps this is the, um, uh, the, the most interesting example. Um, I remember this, um, and FBI couldn't figure out, and they only figured it out. The, the attack was 2001, a few months right after the 9-11 uh, attack on the towers. And years later, they traced it to this scientist who worked in the uh, US, one of the US Army research facilities. Um, there are stories about why Dr. Ivins uh, did this, so on and so forth, but he committed suicide. So uh, nobody will know uh, exactly why he was a disgruntled scientist uh, or was he a radicalized scientist. So <clears throat> as you can see here, there's a number uh, coded in that article you see there. Uh, it, there, there have been lots of incidents. Um, not necessarily attacks, could be accidental. Um, viruses can escape laboratories or the nature with a vengeance can inflict uh, some, uh, some, some harm. So pretty much this is our topic. Um, <clears throat> what is scary to me, and uh, I kept uh, t telling people in the past uh, few months as I understood, as I tried to understand uh, what exactly uh, the, the technology available to us these days. Uh, Dr. Evans, uh, you see the, the name there, right? Um, the second point on the slide, David Evans, uh, is a microbiologist uh, teaching at the University of Alberta, actually, worked for a, a US uh, pharmaceutical company uh, that I didn't know the name. They reverse engineered, they synthesized, I don't know whether they used um, the, the um, uh, well, that CRISPR technology is to modify uh, the properties of the viruses or as well as other uh, parts of our bodies, the little parts, but they synthesized the horsepox virus, which is um, in, I don't know the exact terms, genus or um, whatever is used, but it is definitely the eradicated smallpox, which lives, smallpox only lives in two laboratories as far as uh, uh, whatever uh, I learned. Uh, one facility uh, in the in the states, one in Russia. But what they did was they ordered uh, components, parts, uh, material from some lab in Germany uh, by mail, and they they uh, they resurrected the horsepox virus. Horsepox virus is not as bad as smallpox, 
uh, nevertheless, um, if we can do this, we can resurrect any virus. That's the um, uh, what I'm reading from microbiologists. So today's um, uh, pandemic, uh, the, the um, SARS-CoV-2 virus, <clears throat> is not the most lethal and is not the most transmissible virus. But you see with the technology, the CRISPR technology, the, and possibly other technologies that I don't understand, I don't know, um, viruses can be enhanced. So uh, just to give you an example, I was uh, uh, giggling with uh, a friend, uh, actually it was my son, I was telling him, um, <clears throat> In terms of lethality, they, you can increase the toxicity of the virus. So you can make it more lethal. So from SARS-CoV-2 to the lethality of a smallpox or Ebola, now that we have a vaccine, but uh, if, you, if you don't have the vaccine, I don't think there is a treatment for Ebola yet. Uh, transmissibility, uh, again, I was uh, joking about it. Uh, it's no joking matter, but uh, you, you, the, the viruses can, uh, the, the uh, SARS-CoV-2 can latch onto some sort of um, cells uh, in our noses, whatever, some, some tissue. You can increase, uh, it's a particular type of tissue, but uh, using the technologies, you can make it more transmissible enlarging the scope of the tissues to which it can latch. So these are all the scary thoughts. <clears throat> um, now, as in this current case, evidence, the, the evidence suggests that uh, I don't think that Chinese laboratory uh, let it escape or they manufactured this uh, SARS-CoV-2. There's no evidence yet, but um, it could have been human generated. Uh, we could have done it someplace on earth or they are those emerging viruses as we come closer and closer to the nature, uh, closer to the animals that harbor these viruses and uh, apparently bats uh, are the reservoirs of so many different viruses but um, Lately, we started observing more and more transmission into humans. And then, of course, the, the difference between the, the bacteria and the, the viruses. Well, if I have the bacter bacterium, that's, that's my problem. I cannot, uh, unless I think like you can have a blood transfusion or something uh, from somebody with the bacteria. Here, um, some of you, if you happen to be a biologist, I, you, you know that uh, I have no clue. Uh, you may be smiling, but uh, uh, viruses know no borders. So they, will, um, they are transmissible. <clears throat> now, another scary thought. Um, in the literature, you can read about uh, I don't know the, the, the word, uh, the, the um, uh, people who deal with the, the, the trees and things that you can sort of merge some viruses uh, to create more scary ones or transmissible ones. So that is, um, that is in, the, in the domain of uh, the feasible these days. Uh, with the, um, if you go, for example, <clears throat> the, 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 the journals Nature or Science, uh, there are really scary uh, articles in that regard. Now, uh, if we go back to Dr. Ivins, the US Army uh, laboratory research scientist, um, well, we have all this research, we call them uh, dual use uh, microbiological technologies. The research in these areas, well, they produce the vaccines. Um, they produce, that is uh, um, <clears throat> prophylactics. They produce some therapies against as uh, well, whatever you're seeing there on the, the first uh, <clears throat> item there. Um, I just read uh, that the, it wasn't the coming, but now it is, uh, it is reality. They just released 
um, I think it either yesterday or the day before in Florida, uh, three quarters of a million mosquitoes genetically modified uh, to inflict some sort of genocide to those mosquitoes that transmit malaria. So the, 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 the scary part, uh, playing Frankenstein aside, <clears throat> well, if we can eradicate them, we can eradicate, uh, at least in principle, malaria, which kills um, more than anything else on earth, as far as I know. <clears throat> um, the um, um, new uh, genetic treatments, um, well, we can use the viruses as vectors to carry some, uh, I would say, toxic to the cancerous tumors and cells. Uh, you can use the viruses to deliver uh, those, uh, those, those, those um, bullets, so to speak. <clears throat> so while you have all these benefits, you also have Dr. Uh, Ivins uh, who use it as a bioweapon. So there is a risk. And now we, the, the literature distinguishes between outsiders and insiders. Um, uh, insider, the, the insider example is uh, Dr. Ivins, uh, the late Dr. Ivins. Um, there is some evidence that Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, uh, before 2001, they started working on some bioweapons, but um, bioweapons require uh, extensive, intensive knowledge to uh, be able to um, produce, manufacture, I don't know the exact term, but um, maybe culture the, uh, the viruses. Uh, <clears throat> so they, they they never got any close to uh, to weaponize them, but um, now there are just in the U.S. I'm uh, moving to the the, the third point uh, on the slide. Um, there are four levels of biosafety, um, uh, four different biosafety level. Uh, facilities on Earth. Of course, BSL-4, the biosafety level four facilities are those that store, for example, the uh, smallpox viruses, whatever is left of it, it's stored in two facilities, those are BSL-4. Uh, yet, uh, an accident can always happen. So after all this introduction to the viruses, uh, we're, we're now imagining the hopefully unimaginable. Um, we looked out of a terrorist outfit who could be a uh, disgruntled or radicalized Dr. Ivins. And uh, we are not uh, imagining a state actor using it, although, uh, for example, North Korea, uh, is suspected of having some uh, bioweapons uh, stocked. So, <clears throat> um, what what we what we what we're doing? Um, so we're going to talk about the uh, the, the strategic uh, environment. Um, <clears throat> as we talked about it before, um, if you if if you if you have the knowledge stock. That is power. You can project the power um, just simply by, uh, I don't think you're gonna want to let everybody know what you have, but still is a, um, is a deterrent. Uh, it could be uh, construed uh, as any one of the uh, components of deterrence. We're gonna get to that, the uh, ex ante exposed deterrence. Um, <clears throat> For example, the uh, once you, you you are attacked, well, the the um, if you have the knowledge, uh, then you can mitigate the the effects of the uh, the attack. So um, your knowledge will allow you to 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 uh, to have uh, some prophylactics, a vaccine, for example. Uh, for example, Ebola. Uh, we now have the vaccine. Uh, we, we don't have yet therapeutics. Uh, it's just the other way around for the HIV virus. We don't have a vaccine, but uh, the antivirals 
uh, can turn it, uh, the, 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 the disease that HIV produces into a chronic illness. <clears throat> um, so what we're imagining here is um, in, in order to um, understand the strategic environment, um, various countries have various uh, knowledge stocks. <clears throat> now, uh, the, 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 presumably, uh, this is a very mild assumption, presumably uh, US doesn't hold the same stocks as say China does or Russia does or any of uh, allies do. So um, they are not the same um, uh, set of viruses, uh, it could be different strains of the viruses, so on and so forth. And obviously when you have the viruses, uh, what I'm talking about is um, potentially the, the prophylactics and therapeutics that uh, uh, you have uh, as your knowledge stock. So <clears throat> in terms of um, the, um, uh, the, the biological attack, <sighs> They, they, they inflict public bads. Um, viruses do not understand borders. As long as we travel, as long as we exchange uh, uh, services or goods, uh, potentially uh, it's, it's a public bad in the sense that it can affect one country worse than the other, but the degree of public badness uh, aside, it affects potentially everybody as uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, demonstrated. SARS-CoV-1 <clears throat> didn't go that far. Uh, it was uh, more contained, but uh, this one, I guess, um, fits our bill here. Um, <clears throat> again, returning to the knowledge stocks, how advanced you are and how wide in scope, that is important because uh, uh, if you have uh, all the known viruses uh, to science, well, you probably have the, 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 uh, the strongest uh, hand in the sense of um, knowing just about everything that is known. Now, Again, returning to the insiders and outsiders, um, the, the terrorists we are imagining could be outsiders or insiders. Uh, they can put their hands on uh, a particular virus and um, just, it's probably, there, there's a beautiful article from the late 90s. Um, <clears throat> it didn't have uh, the precision, a fellow economist, um, but it looked at the properties of uh, WMDs. So uh, what, if a terrorist uh, captures some of the uh, viruses uh, or one of the viruses that can be used as a weapon, uh, probably it is easy to, for, you cannot carry a nuclear weapon. Uh, there was a movie I remember, um, um, from uh, the Balkans war in the 90s. He just comes to the US because he holds uh, US responsible for some things. Um, he carries, I think, a dirty bomb uh, rather than a proper nuclear device. Uh, but you don't have to, the, 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 a biological weapon is just a virus. Uh, sort of a, uh, <clears throat> um, a suicidal terrorist can just simply uh, infect himself or herself and then show up someplace there to start uh, an epidemic or pandemic. <clears throat> so the one little note about uh, the, the, your knowledge stocks, well, knowledge stocks are stored uh, probably digitally, but uh, you also have some stocks of the viruses and uh, various storage facilities, depending on how dangerous is the virus in particular, you have to optimize, um, in a sense, the, 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 the security 
you cannot uh, store everything in an SL4 facility. So <clears throat> there is a management problem surely in there in terms of uh, managing your actual stocks of uh, viruses and bacteria and uh, uh, whatever else um, are included, prions and uh, uh, worms, I think. So <clears throat> if there is a threat, so the, the, I, I guess the first point on this slide is the key uh, in understanding uh, what we're, which problem we're sort of identifying as uh, the one we want to tackle uh, is um, if, if, if I have some knowledge stock and another country has a knowledge stock, we're not signing any agreements or anything like the 1972-75 <coughs> accord, but there is an incentive to cooperate uh, if there is a danger. In fact, uh, the way we look at the problem is if there is no danger that it's going to fall into wrong hands, I don't need to cooperate. I don't perceive any need to cooperate because I'm giving away um, my, 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 my projection power. Um, <clears throat> the, my power uh, to be projected. So, um, as you give it away, um, it's a competitive field. Um, but the, the, uh, if there is there is a perceived threat, then there 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 is an incentive to cooperate. On the other hand, uh, the the uh, you're giving away um, your knowledge partially. So, if you think in terms of the trade-off between the two it will depend on various factors. That's exactly what we're trying to do. So we're looking uh, at a very simple problem, theoretically speaking, <clears throat> and uh, every player uh, we have to um, has to somehow come to sort of the, uh, um, to, to, to some, um, I don't want to use the word, uh, the expression utility, but <clears throat> uh, optimal with respect to, to your, um, what your objectives are. So we're going to build a model to, uh, to analyze this very simple problem. Um, if there is no threat at all, I don't have to cooperate. Uh, that reduces my power vis-a-vis uh, the other country, the other countries. Um, so, but the, 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 the knowledge sharing might also leak potential bioweapons knowledge to terrorist acts. So that's another reason perhaps I'm uh, reluctant to share my knowledge. But the fact is there is an incentive to share, there's an incentive not to share. <clears throat> We, um, I did, I did change the title to, to make it a, a common hostile agency because uh, in, 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 in the, uh, the environment we, we defined, um, the terrorist actor is a hostile agent in the sense that um, we interact, uh, they have an inherent uh, willingness to attack. Um, and of course, we're not explaining that. Uh, the the uh, uh, why should a terrorist actor want to attack? Uh, and it's a common agency because uh, the the attack through a viral uh, bioweapon is going to affect all the uh, the principles of the model. Uh, fellow social scientists, of course, are familiar with the agency model. So, uh, the the we modified it to be a common agency. Uh, economists are very familiar with common agency. Uh, hostile. Uh, typically, agencies are doing the work that you don't want to do, but you pay somebody else to do, or you remunerate for uh, somebody else to do it. In this case, it's a hostile agency. Now, uh, one um, 
one dimension we're leaving out is uh, um, you can think about it as uh, either preemption or ex ante deterrence. Both would depend on the biosurveillance. Now, uh, I think the, the Americans are using the term biowatch. Um, since the Ameritrax incidents, they had installed some surveillance equipment in large cities. Um, that's, um, I don't know whether we, anybody wants to call it a big brother or whatever, but it's not um, to record your, 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 your facial uh, <clears throat> traits um, with the cameras in, like the cameras in China versus the cameras in uh, uh, the UK especially, but this um, BioWatch uh, network means to detect whether in the air you, you detect some um, viruses, uh, uh, toxins, etc. Now, of course, <clears throat> if you install such a uh, system, it's, it's an excellent deterrent because it's like uh, the safety is a security equipment you install around your house. So if I were to aim at robbing your house, if I saw that, uh, I would somehow be deterred uh, to a certain extent, obviously. Whereas preemption is uh, what we did to those uh, Toronto 17, we just went and arrested them. But either case, any of them, uh, especially preemption uh, is rooted in biosurveillance the, the, because um, part of biosurveillance and that creates that creates a serious problem uh, in terms of um, um, security agencies and the scientific community because one of the ways a terrorist actor can arise is a scientist turning rogue uh, like Dr. Ivans so uh, you try to <clears throat> you try to institute some uh, procedures by which you want to you want to identify someone who just might turn so in a sense um, um, part of it is spying on your own people potentially um, to those who hate mathematics um, uh, I'll, I'll we'll just go past this very uh, quickly. <clears throat> so we have in our model two countries, A and B. Uh, you can see the, this uh, curve, uh, which we borrowed our physicist colleague uh, um, with my other economist colleague, we were in a dead end because we were using something very complicated. Now, if you look at the, uh, the picture here, <clears throat> E is the, uh, the terrorist effort to attack. If E is zero, well then, um, I don't need to attack. I, I uh, retracted. I don't need to share the knowledge. S A. If I'm the country A, I don't need to share because there is no uh, threat if E is equal to zero. But if E is positive, it generates this kind of utility for the for any one of the two actors uh, in the in trying to deter the um, the terrorist actor. So um, this will, depending on various uh, parameters in the model, this will uh, result in an outcome uh, in economics, game theory, parlance, it's, it's going to be an equilibrium. So <clears throat> the terrorist, uh, so this is the critical parameter theta, the terrorist has an inherent desire to attack. So it's not explained why you become a terrorist. Why do, are you uh, uh, targeting me or uh, country B? But in this case um, of a viral uh, bio attack, uh, targeting me is at the same time targeting the other country, which creates the incentive uh, to share knowledge between the two countries. And of course, there are other costs, operational costs, uh, etc. And if you can see the uh, the countries A and B by sharing the knowledge, they enlarge 
their stock of knowledge uh, that acts as a deterrent. And they, they, they just to summarize the, 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 the setup uh, we came up with, uh, we have two countries, they wouldn't otherwise cooperate to share knowledge, but uh, so we, we ruled out state actors uh, to attack each other uh, using viral uh, weapons. Um, but in the presence of a hostile agent, they would. Uh, to what extent? And then you reach some sort of uh, trade-off and uh, <clears throat> uh, you have an outcome. We have to, something to say about the outcome. Um, there is preemption. Uh, I mentioned the biosurveillance. Uh, you can take preemptive action. Uh, I remember some chemical weapons, terrorists, uh, a movie uh, about 20 years ago. So you go and take them out. <clears throat> of course, you can you can commit mistakes. Um, uh, the um, it's always difficult uh, to predict the uh, the outcomes from a preemptive action. Exanta deterrence, uh, as I mentioned before, <clears throat> um, I will deter the potential attacker if I, I have the vaccines and therapeutics are available. So it is exante in the sense that the knowledge that uh, I have these prophylactics and therapeutics uh, might deter the attack. Uh, but again, here, if you are uh, a fundamentalist, uh, no matter what you'll attack, uh, no need to uh, assess the costs, it just doesn't matter. <clears throat> you oh, might just. Uger, we are uh, just about to run out of time. Okay. Uh, I'll, yeah. You can maybe give us a conclusion, and there might be time for a quick question. Okay. Uh, I know that people will have to log off shortly. Sure, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Forget about that. So um, if you're thinking about a rational terrorist uh, outfit, well, the, the operational cost will matter. 9-11 attacks were not that expensive. I read $100,000. Um, and then you have various uh, results. Uh, the, 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 there are various results we're getting, but uh, in terms of sharing and not sharing. Um, so this is the, uh, the, the, the last point on this slide then is uh, perhaps the, uh, the interesting uh, result we are obtaining. Um, if you're protecting yourself, against uh, any other weapon, um, the, 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 um, uh, every country would deter regardless. So you would deflect. In economics, we call it negative externalities. If I detect over, or if I deter, over deter, then they're going to hit the European countries. That's the experience with uh, the jihadist terrorists in the past uh, 20, 30 years. But in this case, uh, that over deterrence uh, is alleviated simply because uh, anywhere they hit with a viral bioweapon, well, it's going to affect eventually every country. So I don't have to deflect uh, the target towards other countries. So let me stop there. Um, anybody can. Um... That's great. Uh, so, uh, Uger, this has been a really helpful view into, you know, how, what might happen if these types of viruses were to be weaponized and, and what kinds of, uh, you know, steps to take or policies should be implemented in order to manage it. There is one comment in our Q&A, and, and so I think we'll try to address that before we wrap up. Uh, what we need is a standard policy on public preparedness during pandemics. Uh, and the issues are proper education on infections by bacteria or viruses so that the public knows how to prepare. Uh, journalistic reporting that avoids the bad, I guess. I'm not quite sure what that means. And then finally, uh, social media, being able to manage the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
Do you have any comments on that just as we uh, come to the end? Um, <clears throat> I think the only comment I would have is um, there is there is definitely um, an uncertainty over nature's bio attacks. So we don't know which virus is coming our way. But if you think about uh, human induced bio viral attacks, um, there isn't that much of an uncertainty because uh, either, I mean, a terrorist actor uh, cannot be ahead of all those um, uh, BSL-4 laboratories, uh, et cetera. That is the, the, this, the level of scientific knowledge we have. So you better watch out I mean, the, I'm, I'm walking into the, the dangerous territory here because uh, you're gonna basically be spying on your own people. And uh, the, the, in the literature there uh, that I read, there were lots of articles on the frictions between FBI and uh, bio microbiological laboratories, research scientists. Because uh, for example, uh, FBI, um, has in every FBI area, one agent specializing in uh, bioweapons and their task is to go stick their noses into uh, the, 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 the research scientists in this area. I can imagine the friction. So it's a little different in, in this case, nature's attack versus uh, a potential terrorist attack. Terrorist could be a disgruntled scientist. Mm -hmm. Listen, this has been, as I say, really useful. Uh, I think what we've all really come away from uh, over the last few months is a far greater understanding of how disruptive even what is, you know, relatively speaking, a benign virus, relatively speaking. Uh, it's not as, as lethal as Ebola, not as lethal as some other things up there. And yet the disruption to our society and and the death toll has been fairly dramatic. So uh, having a better uh, system to prepare for and to anticipate what might happen, I think is really useful. And, and Peter, I want to thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today. It's, it's, it's great, thank you. Anybody can email me if there are any questions. That's great. And this will be posted. Uh, we do post all of our talks. Um, and do tune in next week, same time, uh, 4 p.m. on Tuesday. And we have uh, Kathy Brook from the School of Policy Studies, uh, who will be talking about another aspect around governance uh, and the pandemic. So thanks to everybody. I hope everybody stays safe. Um, thanks to our speaker. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye thanks, now. Warren. Thank you. Yeah, bye now.